Hi guys, in this episode of the Nostalgia Trip, I'm gonna be continuing with my reactions to Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the 2012 series. Currently, we are on season 4, episode 19, Bat in the Belfry, and episode 20, The Super Shredder. So, those are definitely two interesting names for, for these two episodes. I'm curious what the Bat in the Belfry episode is gonna be about, because the only bat related thing that we know of right now is either uh, April's dad, who I'm pretty sure is not mutated at the moment, and there's also the witch from uh, Japan, who is Karai's friend, uh, who I actually really like a lot. Then when it comes to the Super Shredder, I think I know what that episode could be, but the question is whether that big thing that I uh, am aware is gonna happen, is gonna happen in this episode, or maybe at the end of the season. I don't know. But I'm curious to find out. I'm kind of leaning towards maybe it happening sooner rather than later because of the certain foreshadowing we got a few episodes ago. But yeah, um, despite the fact that the last two episodes, episode 17 and 18, were less entertaining than episode 15 and 16, I'm extremely excited to continue with the reactions of season 4 today because just episode 15 and 16 just left such a good taste in my mouth. Uh, that I'm just really excited to continue binging. I love binging uh, good episodes and I hope that these two and the next two and the two after that and the two after that and the two after that are all really great episodes because that is that is the, the best uh, uh, thing to happen whenever you're binging a show for all the episodes to be amazing. But yeah, um... As usual, before we get into the reaction though, I do want to remind you that you can get a full-length version of these reactions over on my Patreon or on my Coffee account, where by subscribing at the specific time that I've created for it, you get access to pretty much all full-length versions of all uh, the shows that I do, which as of now uh, pretty much comprises only of TMNT 2012, uh, uh, Full Metal Alchemist 2003, and Generator Rex. And for the other two shows, I've kind of put them on pause at the moment because I found it too hard to juggle all the shows at the same time. So I decided to just finish TMT 2012. And then once I'm done with that, I'll go uh, and uh, go through Fumeto Alchemist 2003 and Generator X. At this point in time, those two shows are like half a dozen to a dozen episodes in. So there's still some uh, stuff there, but... Uh, it's gonna be more after I'm done with TMT 2012. But yeah, um, I think that's it. So without further ado, let's get into episode nine, uh, 19, Bat in the Belfry in three, two, one. Oh yeah! The Adventures of Wingnut and Screwless! These old vintage Wait, Wingnut is a character? So Michael didn't come up with that name when he named uh, the bat Wingman. Man, old school comics are so cool. Close to the best comic ever, the Fantastic Four food groups. Are you kidding me? I've been having headaches and weird nightmares about space and other galaxies. I don't see anything physically wrong with you, April. Yeah, maybe it's because of your mental powers. It's probably in your head. My seventh sense tells me it's not that. It's that freaking crystal she never takes off. Yes. Hmm. I don't think a crystal could give you headaches, but let me take a look at it. No! Get away from it! Whoa! You're acting like it's precious. You're addicted to that thing, April. I said back off! Man, I love this intro. Um, Donnie? Some sciencey explanation I won't understand would be cool. <laughs> I, I I just don't know. It's alive. Wait, what? What'd you do this time, Donnie? I have no idea what's going on. Did he give birth to an Aeon or something? Tingly. Wait, he took it off of the comic book? Hey, eyeball! Hey, what? I wonder if he took it off of the comic book. Could he put things that are not in the comic book back to the comic book? Man, that is one 
huge eyeball. Monoculus. It's so real, just like from the comics. Snap out of it, Mikey. April's crystal. It can bring stuff to life. Okay, then. Make it work, Merlin. <laughs> I think he might All actually right. be able to. Make Wingnut and Screw Loose come to life, Crystal. Go for it. Do it. Or doesn't he uh, not realize that it was the, on, the cloud thing that Swap did it? Doesn't work, bro, mix. No, wait. Uh, I just realized that Casey has a cup protecting his balls. Uh oh. Wait, it's the crystal itself? Whoa! You were right, Mikey! Holy Chalupa! What? That is cool. Back on Earth. Great galaxies. This is kind of funny. I like it. <laughs> so much for hiding identity from uh, humans. Ain't that true, Mikey? Okay, I know what's gonna be the thumbnail for this uh, episode of uh, the Nostalgia Trip. Also, they're really stealing from a lot of, or should I say, parodying. A lot of different cartoons. Oh yeah! No skeletonizer. What you gonna do now? Because that's Skeletor, very much from T Man. You know, I feel like this episode would definitely be more appreciated by somebody who is at least ten to twenty years older than me. Because I don't really like the 80s style of cartoons. I get how Wingnut and Screwloose came out of that comic. But how did Skullface escape? Wingnut and Screwloose are real, dude. They came from April's crystal. But don't tell April I took her crystal, or that I lost her crystal, or that the bad guys have her crystal. Cool. Mikey! My crystal! My bad. Oh, she's mad. <laughs> get everybody to the old cathedral fast. I like seeing her so mad though. I've never I've never really gotten that much of a reaction from her compared to this, you know. She's really become my one of my favorite characters in the span of like three episodes, I gotta say. Because again, I do really care about her too much even in the space arc, but now after City at War and Broken Foot, I really like her. I feel like if I was Casey and I was thrown like that, I would piss my pants and stop being a superhero. Because that is scary. He almost died. Whoa! Mikey was right. We gotta start listening to him more often. No fucking shit! Man, this thing even makes that sound that the weapon that nobody used. Now, April, focus your powers. Come to mommy. Now, reabsorb the energy that brought him to life. Finally, back where she belongs. Golly! Did you hear that, Wingnut? They're gonna send us back to being pictures on a page! Okay. So yeah, um, this was actually the, a more entertaining episode for sure uh, compared to Mutant Gangland, which was uh, the second episode of the last video, episode 18. It was definitely a more entertaining episode because the concept itself was a really cool one where your favorite characters get sucked out of their fictional world into the real world. And that is definitely something that I feel like a lot of, like, us uh, have imagined uh, happening or at least have wished to happen and have like uh, dreamt about it maybe even. It's a cool concept, all I'm trying to say, to meet your heroes IRL and to get them from their world into the real world. It, it's a really cool concept. 
Um, I, I, I feel like it was executed really well, and I really like how uh, in this episode, it uh, April's infatuation with the crystal was ramped up even more. It's clearly going to be a problem that uh, they have to they'll have to deal with, and I'm curious. Uh, why is that crystal affecting her like that? Because, like I said, uh, I don't know if it was in this reaction or any of the other ones, but the crystal was the thing that influenced the Aeons positively. So why the hell is it influencing April or those fictional heroes negatively? I don't get that. Because it's always not the whole thing, but it's just a piece. Well, again, for the Aeons, it was the technology that influenced them negatively and turned them into monsters. I really want to know why it's going in this direction. Uh, why is it making her like that? Though, like I said, I really like her infatuation with it. It's definitely cool that we're actually getting a really cool storyline that is about April, not April's family. Because for most of the show's run, her storyline has been about her father then about her becoming a Kuno Witch. Um, and now it's this, and this is definitely the best storyline out of all. I mean, I guess I do like uh, the fact that April is now a Kuno Witch, so I guess that storyline ended up in a cool uh, place, but I still like uh, the storyline and the development of it, uh, in this case, a little more. And yeah, overall, I am still bothered by the fact that this is filler. Um, but it seems like next episode is going to be actual, like, plot-relevant stuff. And if it is, that's gonna be good. But if it's not, I'm gonna be really annoyed. But even for a filler episode, it was definitely uh, pretty enjoyable. And compared to the other four episodes that I reacted to, to today, which is episode 15, 16, 17, and 18, I would rate this uh, right underneath Broken Food and above uh, the episode two episodes from last time, so... We're off to a definitely a better start for uh, these videos, two uh, episodes. But now, um, I guess we should get into the Super Shredder. Although, I almost forgot to give a rating for Bat in the Belfry. So... I don't necessarily think the ratings are gonna match up for this episode. Uh, to put it right between those uh, uh, other four episodes. But I feel like I want to give this episode maybe an 8.6 out of 10. It's more accurate to what I feel like this episode is going to be long term. But I guess right now uh, it, it is closer to an 8.9 out of 10. Like overall it's somewhere there. So pick whichever rating you prefer I guess. But it is very much there. Like I said, enjoyable episode but it's still annoying that it's a filler one. Although I guess... It's not necessarily as filler as the last two episodes were, because it's still moving the storyline with uh, April forward, so there's that. But yeah, um, now let's get into the Super Shredder um, in 3, 2, 1. Well, we're back at Shredder's house, so we are back with the cinematics. How are you feeling on this? Evening, Master Shredder. I, want I really love the way they're shooting stomach. these scenes the here. The rest of the it makes it so fucking cinematic, man. And chief caregiver, I refuse. I'm really getting a foreboding feeling about this episode. Focus. Do not let your attention flitter away from you. All random thoughts are transitory, like dreams. Let them disappear. Bask in the emptiness of the void. Does April still go to school? <sighs> that is enough for today. Uh, really, oh, Shensei? Yeah. Because we only meditated for like 10 minutes? Miss Bradford is finally going to take down your cruel socialist empire for truth, justice, and boatloads of cash money. You're so high and mighty, Bradford. How about I chop you down with my bus up? Why is there capitalist propaganda in the in TMT 2012? I'm going to kick your communist butt so hard it'll fly up and land on your head like a giant butt beret. That's right. Action kick! Hassan definitely would not approve of this. Man, Shredder, you'll really let yourself go. 
Damn, does he look threatening though? Oh, ho, ho. You've become everything you loathe, everything you hate, a mutant. So are you. My daughter, please. He definitely, uh, very obviously has a very clear weak spot though. That beating thing in the middle of the chest. It's called heart. You're insane! You are the monster! Holy cheesy balls! Is that some kind of Shredder clone monster? No, Mikey. I, I think it's Shredder himself. What do we do, Leo? We ram him, obviously. <laughs> obviously, yeah. <laughs> I love how he says obviously. Man, we're really rushing into the story of this episode, aren't we? Man, this design for the Shredder, at least for the face, looks really similar to the design for the Rat King in the 2003 series. I like that. Oh, fuck you, Shredder. What the heck is this? Psychological torture? This is weird. Psycho is more like it. Gaze upon these images, rat. First you take that machine away from me, and then you steal my daughter. She's not yours, you fucking psychopath! Show yourself, Saki! You guys hear something? Oh no! A fucking train, probably? Why did you go to the Prometheus school of running away from things, you dumbasses? No! Fuck you! God damn it, that's what they wanted though! To separate them from, from Splinter! God damn it! And it's working! Man, this is really pissing me off. I'm really angry at the Shredder right now. Even if I didn't know, it's very obviously terrifying for Splinter. You want to see me naked, weirdo? Sorry, no ticket. Did he just fucking die? He went under the train. Man, this is really cool fight. Good riddance, brat. <laughs> Fuck you. Man, everybody's fucking dying. It really feels like this is it. This is what the last four seasons have been building up to. I love that Avery was part of it, like, a, as a ninja. How the fuck weren't there uh, any people in this uh, tube, by the way? This is a great place for a big final fight, I gotta say. But again, what the fuck is this place? Where did we fucking go all of a sudden? Miwa is not here to see him. How evil you truly have become. Oh, that is so cool. Man, she's so good. She's become so good. What is the Undercity? Can somebody explain to me? Because I must have fucking missed it. So I was about to say, I love it when this show gets serious. But it has like actual cool plots and takes itself seriously and it's plot seriously and it's not just like a cartoon. It's when it's more mature like the 2003 series, it's so much better. Drop 
is at least a thousand feet down. Even he couldn't survive a fall like that. We have he can to survive on top of Shadow's back. Splinter. Whoa! Sewer apples. Oh, you fuckers. How the f- What? What do you mean? How? But how is this the end? How is this the end? But this was not resolved. Is this a fucking two-parter? Why is it was it not shown as a two-parter? Okay, I guess. Okay, this episode was definitely heavy, but it's still actually not what I thought it was. Because I was under the impression it happens in a different way, and that's why I don't think this is what I remember uh, hearing about it. I don't think that is it. Uh, but man, this episode was heavy. Like, the atmosphere of the episode as a whole was so heavy all the time. Like, you could feel the, the foreboding darkness of what was about to transpire. And just like the episode City at War and Broken Food, like, it was so good all the time. Like, I don't know, these episodes are so good. And I think the reason why they're so good is because they just focus on the plot. Like, they don't care about making this like a kid show and like a filler, like a very episodic kind of thing where you can just turn on, on any episode and enjoy it, uh, which is what this show has been uh, for the most, uh, for the longest time. But it's actually more like the 2003 series where you have like a more o overarching story and it actually focuses on that story for the whole episode. It doesn't have silly bullshit for kids. I love that shit. That's why I like City at War and Broken Foot, and that's why I really like this episode. It's it's a really entertaining episode with some really cool action and cool set pieces. Like that fight on the train was really fucking cool. Even though I was kind of too focused on talking instead of focusing on the action, it was still really fucking cool. Uh, the fight between uh, Shredder and Splitter that we got in this episode, I can't say it was that great um it was definitely brutal uh in many ways because how because of how goddamn powerful shredder is and how he just pummels splinter all the time but we didn't really get uh any scenes uh or like a choreographed scene of fighting that was really good but overall i do like the vibe and the atmosphere of this episode and the set pieces it was so good i really really enjoyed it and the way it just ends when you think that it might cut off at like a somewhat peaceful time of like the turtles and uh, april worrying about splinter whether he survived or not and it just fucking blows up in your face and uh, all the bad guys are, are standing there like that was kind of it was kind of heavy, like, this episode in a lot of ways reminds me of uh, the season 7 premiere of The Walking Dead. And I'm not gonna say what happens in it, uh, or not gonna spoil uh, anything uh, obvious, but it is brutal very much in the same way where it just keeps hitting you in the face with these things and does not give you even a second to breathe, to the point where by the time you're done with the episode, you're, you're like exhausted. And while I'm not as exhausted as I was for that episode of The Walking Dead, uh, I definitely feel kind of overwhelmed a little bit with this episode. It was a heavy episode for sure. But yeah, it definitely feels like uh, there was definitely things that could have been improved with the episode, like mainly the fighting. I wish we got a little bit of like a better fight scene between a Splinter and Shredder, but I feel like it also makes sense for their fight scene to not be like really martial artsy and uh, like really well choreographed from both sides because now Shredder has become this mutated psychotic creature which doesn't even fight with martial arts. He's more now like uh, Rocksteady who just fights with his own size, uses his own size uh, as a weapon rather than his skills. Which just goes to show again how uh, deranged and devout Shredder has become because of his failures to destroy the Turtles and Splinter. So overall, I still think the way they've done it is honestly perfect, but 
I definitely want to have find it for a more, uh, to have a more uh, choreographed fight between a Splinter and Shredder. So because of that, I'm also going to give this one another 10 out of 10. Like I've been given a lot of episodes recently, 10 out of 10, huh? I think I gave City at War 10 out of 10 because of how funny it was, but this one is, uh, well, not as funny. Uh, it was, or as entertaining in terms of the characters that are featured. Although a lot of those characters, or all of them were featured in this episode. Um, it was still a really good episode. And the atmosphere alone carries it, in my opinion. But yeah, now I definitely gotta continue with the reactions. Because uh, I was contemplating maybe going to bed because I'm getting a little bit tired and uh, uh, because I took break between the reactions uh, a little bit too long. So it's been much longer time than I was planning for it to be. But I'm going to go at least for the next uh, uh, next two episodes, uh, 21 and 22. And maybe even more, we'll see. But yeah, this was a really uh, entertaining episode and I can't wait to see what's going to happen next. Um, and yeah, what did you guys think about these two episodes? Comment your thoughts down below and let's have a discussion about it. And also, before we end this video, I just want to give a huge shout out to my currently three patrons on Patreon. Omar Bridgman, Deadpool and Shane Chess. Thank you guys for your support, I really appreciate it. It, li it really means a lot to me that you have decided to support me. You have continued to support me for such a long time. Hope you continue to enjoy my content and continue to support me going forward. Thank you very much. And now, before we end this video, I just want to talk about something uh, to you guys very quickly, um, which some of you may or may have not noticed before or know about me, that being the fact that I am trans. And yes, this may come uh, as shocking uh, to some of you because I don't really flaunt it that much on my channel, or at least I feel like I don't. Um, outside of like my K-pop reactions, which is where I feel like the most comfortable being myself like this. And yeah, I am in fact trans. Um, I'm not necessarily full on uh, male to female, but I heavily want to transition to being pretty female. I do consider myself more non-binary though, or maybe gender fluid would be the best descriptor as well, because I do have occasional moments where... I feel fine being like just a normal guy, but most of the time, like right now, I do feel very dysphoric. Um, and that's why I'm asking you guys for any help that you can give me, because my situation right now, I, I don't really see any way out of, outside of you guys' help. Because, and this is going to be kept short and concise... I live with my parents, they're never going to accept me as a trans person, they, they just never will. And as a matter of fact, back when I started the YouTube channel, I was actually kind of slightly starting my transition back then, with like starting to grow out my hair, um, I even got to DIY HRT, but because my parents started noticing certain things like... Uh, uh, my behavior had changed a lot and my clothes had changed a lot. I kind of had to stop doing that because they were constantly nagging me about cutting my hair and just started to kind of be threatening in a certain way and felt like they were ashamed of me and everything. And that just kind of, that kind of stress just tired me out to the point where I just gave up. But as dysphoria goes... It just doesn't go away, you know. I still feel like this. And in fact, it's somewhat been intensifying again recently. So I just wanted to share this with you guys. And again, I would really appreciate any amount of support you can give me in regards to this. Because um, I just don't see any way out of this. Because even if I mo uh, moved out of my parents' house and got my, myself a job and everything, that's just not going to work for long-term uh, planning because once I transition, it's like I probably will not be able to get myself a job because my country is very transphobic. Nobody gives a shit about LGBT people at all. So there's not even much I can do even in terms of transitioning here. So, yeah, I don't know. 
I just would appreciate any amount of support you can give me, uh, be it monetarily or in any way otherwise. And this is not about uh, boosting my channel or anything or guilt tripping you with my sob story. I just wanted to get this off my chest and make my subscribers aware of the situation that I am in and that I would appreciate anything that you guys can help me out with. It would mean literally everything. Like for example, uh, a friend that I made after starting this YouTube channel, my good friend Yuri, has been helping me out a lot. And I genuinely might have not been here if it wasn't for him, if it wasn't for him showing up and befriending me. So yeah, this just went a little bit longer than I, I intended, but I would just uh, really appreciate anything you can support me with. That's kind of ultimately what I'm trying to say. And yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you did, Please leave a like, subscribe, also check out the links in the description to my Twitter if you want to follow me over there and to my Wattpad where I post my stories because in addition to doing all these videos on my channel, I'm also a writer. And if you want to enjoy my stories or you simply enjoy my videos, you can head over to my Patreon or to my Coffee account where you can pledge support and help get the channel going, help support me so I can keep writing the stories you enjoy. But if you don't want to do it, that's completely fine, you can still help me out in other ways like liking this video, subscribing to the channel and especially sharing this video with somebody who you think might enjoy it. And I think this is pretty much it for this video, so hopefully I'm going to see you in the next one. Bye!